Hi. Today we're going to have a film on uh, tanning hides. I'm going to demonstrate a deer hide tan and uh, see if you can pick up some pointers. But prior to that, I wanted to show you some of the things you can do with a deer hide. As you can see, I'm wearing a uh, buckskin shirt that I made. This is uh, last year's trophy from our deer hunt. And there's four different deer hides in this uh, in this in this uh, garment. And uh, also, a few years ago, I made a uh, plains bow uh, uh, case and quiver. And uh, you know, that's just kind of a fun thing. We have some uh, little articles here. My wife uh, made a purse. This little uh, purse she made out of her first buck. I tanned the hide. In fact, uh, this this arm sleeve is made also from that same buck. Uh, some little bullet pouches, uh, you know, whatever you want to use them for. Little, uh, here's a, here's kind of a fancy little pouch here. Uh, this is a, a pair of very simple moccasins. I just wanted to see if I could cut a pair of moccasins out without a pattern, sew them up with deer sinew, and, and have a usable, functional, uh, you know, garment. And there it is. There's something that you can do. And here's a... This is also out of my wife's first buck she ever shot, and uh, we tanned her up and made her a pair of chopper mitts, and she wears them, <laughs> well, I won't say all the time, but in the wintertime when she's out, you can pretty well see she'll have those on. And uh, just just wanted to show you a preview of some of the things that, uh, that you can make out of a deer hide once you get it tanned, and uh, now we're going to go on to the... Uh, uh, video of tanning the hide. Here's one of the deer hide. I got some uh, lye water in here and I've had this in for a little less than 24 hours and it helps me take the hair off. I like to de-hair before I try to uh, take off the dermis. This won't be a comprehensive uh, lesson on tanning a deer hide but uh, you get some ideas anyway, and this is just a, this is just an old draw shave, any old piece of probably three sixteenths to a quarter inch iron and do, and you give her about maybe a twenty degree bevel, fifteen to twenty degrees, not ninety degrees, but about twenty fifteen or twenty degrees, and uh, kind of push it away from you. And if you can see how that just pushes that hair off of there. And uh, it's a process. You have to uh, go over each square centimeter of the hide. This other side of the hide now, that we're fleshing, getting that fat and garbage off. That's all got to be done too. Pan over my pole here, Carol. This is just a post that I bought downtown and I've tied it to some stuff and by the way you can't do this if your wife doesn't really love you because <laughs> or your spouse she's talking about she's going to tan a couple and make herself a dress or a skirt but you know it takes a pretty loving spouse to allow a mess like this in the house and I appreciate that because you couldn't do this outside in the winter time. I do love you, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> and, but anyway, I just wanted to show you the other side. i come back and work on that. You can see i got a big chunk started here. I'll just kind of wind up on that. This is the, uh, this is the dermis. And here's my little tool with the 15 degree and you can see here's what you got to do to get that stuff off. Got to go over the whole hide just like taking the hair off. And you can see it cutting down there. And taking that dermis off. If you don't take that off, you're going to have a stiff hide and it's just a fight. It's not impossible to tan it with that on, but it's it's a quite a fight. I'm drying this hide. I got a fan running on it. I want to get some of the moisture out of it. I have used a frame, as you can see the frame laying, but you get, it takes a lot more. You got to stick to it if you put it on a frame. 
Here I've got my brain soup, if you want to call it that. Ready to go on that when it dries up. I just put this in the blender. You cook your brain. I got two brains in there with about a quart of water. Cook them till the brain's done. Throw it in the blender and hit her for about 20 30 seconds. And then when this dries up, mostly dry, I don't want it dried out, but when I get rid of a lot of the moisture, then that'll suck in good. And I'll just put it all over, and then I'll just put it in this plastic bag up here. Put it in the fridge, and that's the beauty of running it over a steak. If you stake it, and you will see me staking it, uh, when, if I stake it, uh, you know, stake in the ground or whatever, but it's winter time, so I'm in the house. If you stake it, you can just, when you get tired, uh, or something interrupts, you can shove it in the bag, shove it in the fridge, and, and you don't lose where you're at. Uh, we're continuing on the deer hide here. And, uh, what I'm doing, I've already put the soup on. What I did, I just laid it out on a board and and just get your hand wet and rub it on and fold it up and and uh, put it in the in the uh, plastic sack there in the Ziploc sack and threw it in the refrigerator last night and now I'm working it. Uh, as it dries out, I've got the fan running, and we just keep, you can see white areas, and that's getting dry, and just keep working it. The elbow grease is a very important part of, uh, of uh, tanning the deer hide. Well, we're getting close with the, with the, uh, close to the end on this hide. As you can see, we've got some pretty soft. Some, some of it's some of it's already tan, you know, softened, and, and there's a lot of it that's uh, that's right at the stage of getting soft. And uh, what this kind of does is uh, it fluffs it, and you break down those last fibers. And what I'm looking for, when she's drying up right, this gets pretty warm and that drives that moisture out of there while it's breaking the fibers down. And you can see she's changing color and starting to look like a, a piece of leather. A couple more hours and we'll smoke this. Well, I put my height in late yesterday afternoon, kept fire on it, built fire a couple times, got a nice color to it. Fire a couple times, and I fired up the last time tonight, last night, and went to bed. And uh, you can see she's pretty flexible. There's, uh, I can feel a couple spots that I'm going to want to work out over that stake. The purpose of the smoking is that... Uh, it waterproofs the fibers. It doesn't make it a raincoat. It doesn't make it. It'll still soak up water, but the fibers themselves are protected. And if you, your hide gets wet now, I can throw this in the washing machine. It'll come out the same as it is right now. Well, I want to show you something today. This hide has been tanned and smoked, but I've been having a little fight with getting it soft. It's got. If you will listen. Sounds like paper or a piece of a piece of tin in there, and that's I just and normally I can just take a little water, I just put my fingers in like that and rub that on there, and that's enough maybe a couple times oh in a spot the size of my hand. And this area is about that big. So I tried that and it wasn't working so good, it usually does. So now I've uh, I cooked a little more I've got some brains cooked here. And uh, I'm using that the same way, but I'm, but I'm using that instead of water. And uh, I have, I, it, it's like magic uh, how, it's, how it's working on this thing. So all you do is just put it on there and rub it 
there's a little paste in there you, you get. And uh, evidently when I drained it before, I didn't get enough grain on there. Because it certainly is magic. We're just going to work this just a little bit at a time. And we go on up. I've got a lot of this that I've already softened. That's all it is. You can see a little damp spot there. <coughs> and then uh, that's my theory that if you drive that on through, so from the same side I put it on, we can put it on both sides, but I don't want it that wet. I drive it, I, I, then I go ahead and break it. Step over here, Carol. I break it from the same side and that heat, then I'll kind of drive that moisture and drains. And that's getting warm from the friction there, and we just, just keep working it. But this is, uh, you can just retan it, re-smoke it. This will have to be re-smoked, by the way, when I get this done. But I'm going to end up with a mighty nice piece of leather. some information that you can apply and use yourself. Uh, one thing I did not show you was these uh, uh, goat hides that I've tanned. I can tan some stuff with the hair on and uh, also my coonskin cap. Uh, was uh, I tanned that and made that. And You know, I don't have patterns for a lot of this stuff, but uh, you can figure it out. But you can find patterns on the internet or, or uh, maybe a friend. But uh, anyway, Enjoy. Thanks.